want the reward of Allah and the reward of Akhirah. Do one thing. Be blind for what other people do and concentrate on yourself. Concentrate on yourself. Don't judge people. Sisters, you may sit next to a sister who is not dressed the way you want her to dress. Or maybe she has a, she put makeup on. Brothers, you may be sitting with someone that you think he did something haram, his pants too long, he shaved the beard, he trimmed the beard. Don't judge people. You were not sent to judge people. But if you see something that you think is not Islamic, have a nice nasiha, conceal secret nasiha, and move on. I want to conclude with a beautiful story that Nabilsi, Alusi, rahimahullah, in Dimashiq wrote. And I want, this is a beautiful story. And this is, is revolved in, a, in an issue that most of us will not act that way. Alusi, he said, an Imam told me, he said, the Imam, he slept one of those nights after Salat al Isha, and then he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Imam, Ya Imam, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he is my neighbor in Jannah. So the Imam, he said, I say to myself, I, he did not, you know, not talking about me. I'm the Imam, I'm the Havid, I'm the Alim, I'm the Mufti. But he's talking about some simple man that I know. He who only just goes out and sells basic things on the streets. And he's not an Imam, he's not an Alim, he's not a Mufti. Why would he deserve to be with Rasulullah in Jannah? So he said, instead of shak, instead of doubt, I kept it to myself. But the next night, the same, same thing happened. And the third night, the same thing happened. Rasulullah kept coming back until I went to the man and said, Ya hadha, oh, this man, messenger of Allah was coming to me three nights in a row, telling me you are his neighbor in Jannah. What did you do? Why did you, how come you received that status and you became not only from the people of Jannah, you became from the, you became a neighbor of Rasulullah. So the man told him after a long discussion, he said, it's a long story, but I summarize it. He said, I got married to this beautiful young lady whom her father is well respected in the community, well respected. And he said, in, her, in our wedding night, she sat on the bed and she started crying. And I thought to myself, she's shy. She said, I said to her, La alayki, don't be afraid. Don't worry. We will get used to each other. She said, no, that's not what I'm crying. She said, I am pregnant from zina. I am pregnant from zina. He said, I didn't know what to do. If I come out and I expose her, then the whole city would know about her and her family. And this old man that is well respected will no longer be respected. So I decided to conceal the sin and to look into my own sins. And I said, may Allah forgive me and forgive her. And I did one thing he said. I kept her at home in a different room. And he said, finally, the night when she was delivering her child, and she delivered the child. I took that baby and I said, give the baby to me. I'll bring him to you. She delivered a beautiful little boy. And I took the baby to Salat al-Fajr, to the masjid that I used to go. And I purposely went to the masjid late. And I put, at the, masjid, I put the baby right inside the masjid. And I proceeded to the jama'ah, making sure that I can see the child also. And when the imam said, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. And the people were about to leave. They saw this baby and the people were like, Astaghfirullah, somebody left the baby here. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. He said, then I jumped. I said, oh my God, my wife always wanted to raise a yatim. My wife always wanted to raise someone who has no parents. Give the baby to me. We will raise him. So I took the baby. I gave it to my wife. And I said to her, I will never tell your story to anyone. But I'm only telling you because I want the reward of being next to Rasulullah in Jannah. Sallallahu alayhi wa So ya ikhwati fillah. If you conceal someone's fall and you look into yourself, then Allah may reward you like that. You know, there's a funny story. 
Back in Lebanon, this happened. My father told me this story. He says, in Jama'ah, like this masjid, a group of Jama'ah came along. Uh, we were, they were praying Isha prayer. The Imam prayed and after he finished, a group of people said, Ya Imam, we think that you only prayed three rak'ahs. Another group said, no, no, no. I think we think he prayed four. Correct. Everybody's disputing and then suddenly they, felt they saw a man sitting aside, not saying anything. They asked him, why aren't you saying anything? It looks like, you know, why don't you come in and, and, and talk? He looks at them very wisely as if he knows everything. And confidently he says, he's prayed for. They said, why are you so confident? He said, he prayed for, I am definite, wallahi he prayed for. They asked him, how do you know? He said, ah, you see, I run four shops. And in Salat, in the first rak'ah, I've calculated the earnings for the first shop, second rak'ah, second shop, third rak'ah, third shop, and fourth rak'ah, fourth shop. My calculations are correct. I've got no other problems. That means we've prayed for. <laughs> it's funny, but you know what? It happens all the time. This man is calculating his earnings by which he calculated his rak'at of the salat. So the world is twisted the other way around. When Allah gives us too much, we forget our Lord even in our salat. And that's what Iblis said. He said, لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ mustaqim." I shall sit awaiting for them on your straight path. In their salat, I'm going to wait for them. In the Quran, I'm going to, meaning when they're reciting, I'm going to wait, I'm going to whisper. I'm going to make them turn even their worship into a sin. Even their worship into a sin. Why my brothers? Because of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This was the strength of Islam. See my brothers, after one of the battles, Sahaba, you know now this may sound nice and pretty. You need to understand Sahaba were like us. They made mistakes. There was hiccups, but they were men who were very quick to patch it up and fix it up. After one of the battles, there was a lot of booty of war. The so Sahaba got together and now they're having what? Mashura amongst one another. How are we going to distribute this? So each companion speaks his mind. And Abu Dhar, who was an Arab, a very staunch Arab, he gave his opinion. And then Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who, was a, who used to be a black slave. When it got to Bilal, Bilal says, Abu Dhar, look, I don't really agree with your opinion. I think this is what we should do. I think this is what we should do. So Abu Dhar became so angry. He says,